Well, here I have my data from my practical, which I'm going to graph to get a linear relationship. I've typed up in this column all the voltages I set up. I've labelled it voltage. V is the symbol for voltage, and V in brackets means I measured it in volts. Over here, I looked at the current that occurred in my wire for each voltage. Current has the symbol capital I, and it was measured in milliamps, so that's in a bracket there. I've got three trials, and you'll notice that my data sometimes has lots of numbers in it, and sometimes just a couple. So what I'm going to do is highlight all of those cells, and I'm going to use the decimal shift. Because what already happened was, my device could measure right into that third decimal place, and I should show that by playing around with the decimals there. If I use it anymore, I'm going to round too much. I just want to leave it at the third decimal place. I need to get the mean of all of these dependent variables. So I'm going to click up in the cell and type in mean current, symbol I, and the unit will still be milliamps. So I'm bracketing that. Press enter. Now in this cell, I'm making sure I've clicked it so it's active. Type in equals sum, which is going to add and open a bracket. I'm going to highlight this row and close the bracket. Now at this point it's going to add up those three cells. Press the slash key to divide. There are three measurements, so I click three and I hit enter. And that will automatically find the mean for that row. Now once I click in that box, you'll see this little blue um, square appears. Grab it with your mouse, drag down, and it will repeat that operation for every row. And so within just a few seconds I've got all my means sorted. Notice that the means have got loads of decimals, but my trials have only got three decimals. I'm going to highlight that, that column, use the decimal tool, and shift that back so that I've only got three decimals, because my mean can't be any more accurate than the tool I used. So that looks pretty good now, and I'm ready to start my linear graph. For the linear graph, I need to highlight, first of all, my independent variables. They're easy, there's only ever one column of those. I'm going to hold the control button down and highlight the mean for my dependent variables, and I'm going to let go. At this point, you've got two columns selected. The first one you select will become the x-axis. The second one will become the y-axis. Go Insert Chart, and you'll get a toolbar pop up. Go to Chart Types, scroll down. You can use the wheel or the little, toolbar, the little um, bar there. Click on Scatter and go Insert. And suddenly I've got my graph. I can move that around now. And from here on, everything to do with the graph is done through this tiny little arrow here. That's all the tools we need. We can ignore all this stuff up the top now. Now, because it's a linear relationship, I'm going to tell the graph to draw the straight line. I'm going to click the graph, open up this little drop down menu, and go Advanced Edit. A new screen will appear here. It should say Customization. Scroll right to the bottom and you will see trend line. We're going to click that and type in linear and it will draw the line of best fit for us. While we're in here, we can tell it to calculate the gradient and give us the mathematical relationship. So you'll notice it says label custom. We're going to change that to use equation and click, click update. Now you'll see here it's kind of on two lines. If you click it once and then a second time, you can change the position to anywhere you like. Inside the graph is fine, and here it's all laid out. So using y equals mx plus c, we've got the y-axis equals the gradient times the x-axis minus 0 0.04. That's our y-intercept. We're just about done with this graph. I'm going to put my labels on now and my title. So through the drop-down menu, go back to Advanced Edit. And one of the first options is the title right here. We're in the Customization tab. I'm going to click in there. I'm going to call this voltage versus current for uh, oopsie, an electrical investigation. And I'm going to then scroll down. Notice that it updates as soon as I leave that area. On the horizontal axis here, it needs a title as well. And this is actually the voltage. So I'm going to put voltage, comma, capital V for voltage. That's the symbol that we would use in a formula, comma, and in brackets, the unit is the volt. I'm going to change that to the left vertical axis. You can see it's updated already. And this is not just current, it's the mean current, which is represented by a capital I, and it's measured in milliamps. And at this point, I can click Update. And look, my graph is just about ready to go. I'm just going to change these circles into crosses 
because a circle is a really big spot and the data point could be anywhere. If we use crosses, then it's a bit more obvious where the data point is. Back up to advanced edit. We're going to scroll down and where it says series point shape circle, we are going to choose the X mark and update. And there we go. So the graph's done at this point. Just a wee tip. If you don't find that your axes are starting at zero for some reason, you can force it to start at zero. Go back to the advanced edit and just make sure that for the horizontal axis the minimum is zero and for the vertical axis the minimum is zero and that will just make sure the graph isn't starting at some other number we can see where it cuts the y-axis fairly evenly to finish off we need to make sure that the y and the x are replaced they actually mean nothing they're just placeholders for the formula we haven't yet finished this mathematical relationship you could print this and then handwrite them correctly on the sheet, or you could type somewhere in the sheet over here and then print the whole lot. But on the y-axis, the quantity I used was the mean current, and that is using the symbol i. So I'm going to type i equals. I've got my gradient. That is 0 0.207. That's being multiplied by x. Now the multiplier is an asterisk. And on my graph, x is represented here by a v for voltage. So I'm going to type in V. Um, I've got a very small y-intercept. You don't need that to pass the 90935 standard, but it's good practice to show that your data isn't perfect. And that now is the final mathematical relationship for this particular investigation. Now, before I get ready to print this, I can see there are some interesting data points here, which are probably outliers that I might talk about later in my excellence discussion. I'm going to add in some lines that will help me talk about those a bit better. So back to advanced edit, I'm on the horizontal axis at the moment, that's the voltage um, label. Where it says grid lines major, it's only showing me five points. This is one, two, three, four, and zero. So I'm going to make that 10 because I know I had 10 points. Um, now you can see it has tried to force them to be um, just past that data point. It won't finish on that data point. I could try a nine. Look, nine works fairly well, it's going up on 1.25s, but you'll need to play around with what works for your graph. Um, I might actually just stick with 7 for now, because it just happens to give me 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 fairly nicely. Now in between there, there are obviously numbers, there's 0, 1, 2, 3. So for minor lines, I can add extra divisions. Now I don't need to do any more than that, because I can see every line is 1, then 2, then 3, then 4. On the vertical axis, though, there are certainly more divisions we could look at. So I'm going to go left vertical. I'm going to come back down to major. And I'm just going to play around a little bit to see um, what sort of numbers it pops up when I uh, add more divisions in here. So we'll just try 9, and we'll just try 10. So I think I'm going to go back to 7. That's going up in 4s, or point fours, as you can see. So that means there are four things in between. I might just add in three lines. So it goes 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, and that's pretty good. I can update that now, and that, that's ready to print, and I can fairly accurately figure out what any of those points were without coming back to the data. Okay, I'm going to print this graph now, so I'm going to select it, and I'm going to go Control-C to copy it. I'm going to create a new sheet down here in the corner, and when the sheet pops up, control V to paste that graph. Now I know from experience that if I drag that corner, so it's all the way to the end of column J, that's a pretty good size for an A4 bit of paper. I'm going to go File, Print, and just check your paper is on A4. Sometimes it starts off on Letter. So click A4. You want the current sheet, not any other option here. Fit to Width, Landscape, Print, and a preview will pop up. Pretty straightforward if you're using Chrome. You can check it out. If you don't like it, you can cancel, go back and resize things. But that would look pretty good on A4 paper. I've got room to hand my, my relationship if I like. Add any more notes. I can highlight outliers pretty carefully. I'm going to make sure my printer's set up and click print and I'm done.